So in this segment, we're going to be talking about why Britain will get absolutely destroyed in a trade war with the EU. And that's not hyperbole because we can't do any um, we can't do any actual checks because of the fact that we're not doing import checks at the moment. So how are we going to stick tariffs on goods coming in from the EU when we don't know what's coming in from the EU? So um, I'm going to battle a lot with my mouse here because the, as you can see, the icon is very small. Um, okay, let's try again. Should I use the MS Paint really? Uh, no, okay, let's try this again. Sorry, bear with me, technical difficulties. So, so as you can see here, right, I can see that now. It's blue on blue really. So you've got, you've got goods going this way, right? From the UK to France. Now these goods are being checked. So what that means is goods going from the UK, right, into um, into France. What that means is the French, or sort of the EU in this case, can put tariffs on those goods because they know exactly what's coming in and they can figure out the exact tariff to put on those goods. So if it's beef, I think it's around like a 40% tariff or something crazy like that, right? So what that means is in a trade war scenario, the EU can very easily stick tariffs on goods coming in from the UK, no problem. If it comes in via Northern Ireland, no real issue there because this is an open border. So if the goods come in um, from Northern Ireland into Ireland and then back into France because that's the new kind of land bridge, that's not an issue. Sorry if the mouse is flying around. I can't do a lot about that because I'm struggling to see it. But for goods going this way, the UK cannot put any, any um, tariffs on those goods. Why? Because we don't know what's coming in. We don't actually know what's coming in from the EU because we don't do any checks. Now, the UK's only real leverage is here within Northern Ireland because the UK are the ones doing the checks uh, for goods going to Northern Ireland and the UK could try and suspend parts of the protocol. But that's not going to be as a major concern for the EU right now, uh, predominantly uh, because those goods are still of kind of EU standard. The only issue will be if the UK tries to circumvent um sort of export checks of goods going to the eu because what the eu what the uk could do is if we suspend checks going into the irish sea via this arrow here we can use northern ireland as a land bridge into the eu so the goods will go essentially into northern ireland through ireland um and then back into the eu so that that's a, a key problem here which the eu cannot solve um because of the fact that it's you, where do you stick a border at that point, which is something we'll talk about in a moment. So point being is that the EU will be in trouble if we do that. But the UK or GB, sorry, will struggle to do that on mass. So um, because of the fact that these kind of ports won't be able to facilitate that amount of trade. If you think about how much trade goes through the Dover Calais crossing or, you know, from GB to, say, France, there, there's a lot of trade that goes through that um through that way there is no way northern ireland will be able to process that amount of stuff from what people have told me um you know I, some of those goods are going into um ireland to do the checks you know irish ports because of the fact that northern ireland doesn't have the port facilities to deal with um the checks so what that means is that even if the uk did suspend some of the checks and tried to flood northern ireland as a way into you know ireland and then into the eu they'll face problems there because those ports will be absolutely full um and they won't have the facilities to move all those goods into the eu so that kind of this kind of leverage point here is okay but it's not going to be that strong this is the only thing the uk can do which is basically get rid of checks within the irish sea um, that's it. But the EU does have a strong card to play when it comes to tariffs because, you know, you can stick, you know, 20, 30 percent tariffs on or whatever. And even if those do breach WTO rules somehow, which I don't think they would, it takes years to go through the WTO. So the EU has time on its side there. The only issue is, would the EU do it? That's the key question, because if, say, for example, you buy fish from uh, Scotland, right, and that will go through the UK um, into into France, right? It means that certain EU consumers might not get the exact products they want. However, the EU has, you know, if you live in the EU, you have access to, what, 26 other countries to get stuff from. So if you can't buy, you know, cod from the UK or fish from the UK, for example, you can get some sort of replacement kind of fish from, say, um, Denmark. Denmark, you know, big fishing country. Or, say, Norway, um, etc. So you have options there. 
So sorry, as again, I battle with my mouse here, it's very hard to see. But so this, this leverage point here isn't that strong. And this is a key problem for the UK. So if, if that does happen, it does put the EU in a very awkward position. We'll talk about that in a moment, like I've said. Um, but this is the UK's only leverage point. We can't do import checks. We can't do tariffs because we don't do import checks. And even if we did do um, tariffs, if we did start sticking tariffs on certain products, the problem with that is going to be it's going to be pushing consumer prices very high in the UK. Prices are already going up in the UK. It's going to push them even higher if the UK somehow you know sticks you know 25, 30 percent tariffs on goods coming in from the EU. Let's not forget here we import way more food than we export from um, to the EU. The UK is very reliant on food imports. So by sticking on tariffs, that would put the UK in a very weakened position and it will tick off a lot of people. If your food suddenly goes up by 20, 30%, it's going to annoy a lot of people. Um, so that's a key problem there. Um, the EU could also speed up kind of the um, some of the service agreements, the temporary ones that they have. Um, the only other problem is if the UK starts suspending parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol, um, what it means is... It, it was the EU in an awkward position of this border basically disappears, this kind of a trade border. I don't know if the mouse is disappearing or what, but then you can't put a border in the island of Ireland. You can't do that, as I draw this very awkward line and probably tick off a lot of pe people. That You can't put a border here, it breaks the Good Friday Agreement. But what the EU can't do is put a border here in the wherever ocean this is, right? You can't do that because you're going you're gonna to tick off Ireland. And Ireland has a veto. Also, the fact that if they do that, then, you know, it, it, you kind of give Dominic Cummings the win that he desired because he wanted Ireland essentially to be taken out of the EU single market and customs union. That was Dominic Cummings' goal, essentially, by putting the EU in this situation. But my point kind of being is that, look, the EU, right, this is the only leverage the UK has. We can't do tariffs because we don't have the facilities for that so this is the only thing we can do is to just get rid of checks in the irish sea but that's not going to do that much damage to the eu until we start doing you know genetically altered food and all this other rubbish right so that's that's you know this is not a major problem right yet especially since the eu are going to reduce the amount of checks they do on goods going from gb to ni um, under their new proposals so they're not that concerned by it i think to an extent the french are like really how far this is going to go can't do a hard border here, right? Can't do a border here. So this puts the EU, like I said, in a, in a slightly awkward position here. But the export, you know, tariffs are very high. Are going to be very high, and that makes exports from the UK to um, the EU basically pointless because they're just going to be too expensive to buy. And so for these reasons, uh, the UK will get absolutely pounded in a trade war because. It's one side. It's a one-sided fight at that point. The EU can very easily stick on tariffs. They already have the amounts with how much they can put on if they want to, because they do that for other WTO countries, other you know third countries. They don't have an agreement with at that point. Countries like Russia, I think potentially, for example. So the, the EU have options here. The UK doesn't have a lot. They could easily flood Northern Ireland, but also the fact that you know if we did this the Americans would be on our case, you know, these people all the way over here, because at that point we are risking peace in, oh, not here, but uh, down here, because we are risking peace with the Good Friday Agreement. So the Americans could get involved. And if I was Joe Biden's government, I'd be getting involved at this point saying, look, you know, the EU have put out very, very generous proposals. Um, I think you should accept them, because if you do, if you do anything to risk peace in Northern Ireland, we will start sticking tariffs on goods and you will potentially be sanctioned over it. So I would be very careful if I was the UK. We are treading on thin ice here. And it could be a situation where we're, in, we're, we're walking into a trade war. Neither side wants a trade war. No one really wants one. Um, but but if we keep going down this path, we're very much risking one. I don't know how many more EU um, proposals or concessions they can make on their part. Unless they're like, oh yeah, Frost, we agree with you. Let's rip up the Northern Ireland Protocol and be buddies. That's the unless Sefcovic comes up with something like that, which never going to happen unless he loses his brain. Um, this trade will be very one-sided, and the UK will face the the brunt of it. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe EU countries start boycotting the UK at some point as well, and just saying we're not going to do trade with you anymore. We're not going to buy or sell anything to you because that again would do major damage to the UK as well. We're very reliant on um, imports of energy, food. 
um, and other necessities, medicines. So that's going to be interesting to see. But um, until we get to that point, this is kind of the state of play here, my very crudely drawn lines. But um, point being is that this blue arrow going from... Oh, sorry, I can't see the thing. This arrow pointing this way, um, that's going to be a major problem for the UK. And you've got other ones as well. You know, if we export to the Netherlands, they have the facilities to deal with that. They can, you know, they have the agents to deal with um, the problems, you know, the checks that will have to be done at that point, the tariffs and things like that. We don't, we don't have the agents or anyone to deal with that. Even if you export goods to Denmark, the same story, to Germany, same story. Um, this is the reality of the situation. A very one-sided trade war where one side is swinging the hammer. Um, and that's not going to be the UK. But anyways, look, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Support on Patreon as well if you can. And yeah, I'll see you next time.